that in the mail i appreciate that oh i'm live okay uh now i am live on all platforms so uh what's up everybody welcome to wine talk with tesh it's your boy tesh uh we're gonna give everyone a couple minutes i know a couple of you guys are already logged in you guys are already watching i hope that you guys are doing well we are drinking some incredible wines tonight from spain um and i'm excited to share them with you so um, what else, what, what do I need to talk about before we actually dive into these wines and, uh, give everyone a chance to, uh, join us. Um, Jordan's behind, behind the man behind the scenes. As hello, hello. That's, why, that's what, what uh, that's why it looks so dope. So if you guys are watching on Instagram, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, but you know, Facebook and YouTube are a little bit better. I'm not saying it's a lot better. It's a little bit better. Uh, because we have a bunch of graphics on there. I have maps and stuff that I like to point you guys out where we're at in the world, all that fun stuff. So, uh, so, Hey, thanks for welcoming everyone, Jordan. Appreciate that. If I could, uh, reiterate to everyone, hello, everyone. Welcome. What if I just do the whole talk in my, with my Indian accent this time? I think you should. I feel, I feel like that would be. Hello everyone. Welcome to the, uh, wine talk with Tesh. My name is Tesh. We're going to be drinking some fantastic wine tonight. Uh, first and foremost, if you have the bottle of the Finca Nueva, uh, Biura, because, you know, when you're Indian, you don't pronounce Vs. Uh, you just say B. If you're drinking the Finca Nueva Viura, pour, sorry, Viura, no, I'm talking about. Pour yourself a glass, all right? Um, this is one of those wines that, like, when I taste it, it, like, knocked me off my socks. And I just had to have it. And then eventually it was like, we're going to be in Spain. I, I want to share it with you guys. So um, this is a stunning wine. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Uh, Finca Nueva means newest estate. And newest estate, it's called newest estate because uh, Miguel Angel de Gregorio um, has, <laughs> thanks, sis. Uh, has uh, multiple properties that he owns and multiple projects that he's worked on over the years. Um, so this is his newest project. It was, in terms of wineries, it's fairly young. It's founded in 2004. Um, and the whole idea, the whole concept behind this particular winery was to make wines that are not traditional Rioja. Uh, these aren't wines that you necessarily want to lay down for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, kind of like often like Riojas are. Uh, the whole idea behind this was that they wanted to make young and fresh wines uh, that are easy to drink and consumable now. Um, so uh, really, really simple label. There's not a lot going on there. Um, but yeah, uh, I love Finca Nueva uh, in terms of what they offer. I think that the wines are very, very different from what you get from traditional Rioja wines, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, from traditional Rioja wines. Uh, and I think that you get uh, something different and something fresh and fun and awesome. Knocks you off, knocks off your socks or knocks your socks off? You know, Aunt Nora, I don't know, baby. You know, we're just going to go with whatever, whatever floats your boat tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Catherine, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, he, I think he is next level. This, is, this stuff is off the charts. Uh, so if you have the wine, if you haven't already poured yourself a glass, if you have not poured yourself a glass already, you are messing up because uh, the wine is stunning. So you should definitely pour yourself some. Um, everything here is planted near what's called the Ebro River uh, in Rioja. So, hang on, let me back up. Let me back up. Okay, so we're going to put up the map of Rioja. Okay, so first things first. A lot of people think of Rioja as just like one specific region, but actually Rioja as a region can be broken down into three separate regions. So there's Rioja Alta, uh, which you see in the map, on the, on the Rioja map that's up on the screen right now, there's Rioja Alavesa, uh, which is like more north uh, and northeast, if you will. Uh, and then uh, Rioja Oriental, or what, what is traditionally being called uh, Rioja Baja, which is more east and towards the south. 
Um, so this particular wine is coming from the Rioja Alta region, okay? So it's uh, very near the Ebro River there that's on that map, uh, which as if you guys aren't familiar or, you know, I think a lot of you guys know that uh, where it comes from makes a huge difference. Sorry, just joined because YouTube isn't working for me. Um, hey, Jordan, can you check to see if YouTube is working? All right, cool. Thank you. We're checking on YouTube right now. Uh, we'll figure out what's going on, okay? Um, but we're in the Rioja Alta, near the Ebro River, uh, and this is 100% Vera, this wine. And one of the things that I love about this wine is, is the nose. So uh, before I had even purchased the wine, um, I sat down with my, my, my wine reps and I stick your nose in the glass and it's just a stunning nose. It just kind of jumps out at you with that tropical note. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, Jordan, I'm being told that YouTube is working for, for someone else. So yeah, I just, I just checked on it. It's working for me. All right. Dope. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure why YouTube isn't working guys, but, uh, you can always log in on Facebook. Uh, and I'm here too on Instagram. So well, one of the three, right. Um, but yeah, the graphics are going to be best on YouTube and on Facebook because we have the maps and the images of the bottles and all that fun stuff. So uh, so yeah, uh, Viura uh, in other parts of the world is known as Macabeo. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, uh, we, we I feel like I feel like we probably probably aren't, aren't going to run into Macabeo uh, as a single varietal here in the states very often. Uh, very very commonly used as a blending grape in in other parts of the world. Uh, but for this purposes, all you need to know is that Viura is Macabeo. It's, it's the same same grape. Um, the winery does a lot of like sustainable farming. Everything's harvested by hand. Of course, I'm talking with my hand a lot. I don't know why, like I'm blocking. Anyways, um, full disclosure, I've been drinking. Uh, anybody else been drinking? All right, cool. Um, three to four months in French oak, least stirring, regular least stirring during that three to four month period in French oak. So the end result, I think, was with a wine that is uh, not only smells delicious, uh, but is absolutely stunning uh, on the palate. A lot of like pineapple, passion fruit, almost kind of like a vanilla custardy flavor. Toasted bread. There's a good amount of acidity, which makes it perfect. I'm glad that you love the Viera as much as I do. I think it's stunning. I think this is a total bang for your buck uh for uh for 17 bucks um yeah i think if you're gonna pair this wine uh first of all i want to know in the, in the chat first of all you guys are a little quiet in the chat oh christy thank you so yum girl i got that yummy yum all right i'm gonna stop doing that i can't believe jordan just let me sing um but if you if you guys uh <laughs> If you guys, uh, did anybody make the baked empanadas? Did anybody do that? I want to know. Don't everybody like stay quiet now because I, I got need to know what's going on in your world uh, because I see that there's like a good amount of you watching. So I need to, got YouTube working too. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Picking up on some apples, David. All right, cool. You didn't make the empanadas. What did you make, David? Because I, I know you cook food. I know you made something good. What what did you make? That's that's the better question. Uh, and Mila, I can nod my head if you want me to. I don't know. You know, but you made chili. Oh, oh, Ashley, good. I'm glad to hear that you made the empanadas. How are they pairing so far? So hang on, did you make beef empanadas or did you go with something else? Because that makes a big difference here. Although I will say that I think that with beef empanadas, you can pair this wine, but I think it'll pair better with the second one. Uh, Chile, Fer Chile Verde is delicious. Je Christy, there's no such thing as just salmon. I know you hooked it up a little bit, right? I mean, you hooked it up a little bit, I hope. Um, salmon and asparagus, there you go. That sounds good. Beef empanadas. Beef empanadas are going to really, really shine with the Abada de Tuerta, which is going to be our next one. Um, so, yeah. I know a couple of you guys have said that you really like this wine, but I want to know, uh, working on empanadas, what, to, I don't know what the, <laughs> I got a meat lover's pizza, hopefully for the, dude, Blake, that is going to be the shit. 
Uh, that's going to be really, really good. The Meat Lover's Piece is going to smack with that Abadi Ada Tuerta. That is a great call. By the way, how is Mammoth? How are you doing up there? You doing all right? You enjoying your, enjoying your time? Beef empanadas, and they were hard to make. <laughs> Sorry, man. I wanted to give you something fun to try. You know what I mean? I always want you to try something new that you probably haven't had before. So uh, enjoy this as an aperitif for those of you who, who made, uh, who made um, the beef uh, empanadas. A little acidic for me. I don't know if the chile verde is too strong. I don't know, man. Um, I wouldn't have necessarily paired this with chile verde um, because I don't think that uh, I don't think that I just don't think it would have made a good pair for for chile verde. Maybe something like uh, like verdejo might have done a little bit better because it's you know very green dish. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean maybe it, yeah, try it without the the chile verde and see how the chile verde works with the uh, abadia de tuerta. Uh, is the shit a technical sommelier term? The shit is a technical sommelier term, and any uh, any sommelier who does not actually say this is the shit, um, <laughs> they're fucking lying. Okay, uh, they're not real. So, so yeah, Ralphie and Marianne having Captain Crunch with the wine. They might be. I don't know. I haven't heard from them. They might have their hands full. Uh, with the uh, with the kiddos, good Blake. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you're having a good time. Captain Crunch would bring out the vanilla in the wine. It probably would. It probably would. Uh, something a little more mild. Okay, try it. Yeah, try it on its own. Give it a few sips without the chili verde. I mean, I, I know that you guys like spicy or like even just a little bit spicy. So um, that might that might kind of mess with this particular uh, wine. I don't I don't think that I would necessarily pair Vera with a spicy dish, but you know, um, to each their own. Um, Jennifer, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. I see you on, on the gram. I appreciate you. Oh, nice. Christy, leftover caramelized shallot pasta for the red, so umami. Has to be the Captain Crunch with the Crunch Berries. It really does though, dude. And if you can get the, if you can get the All Berries Captain Crunch, ooh wee. Some of y'all don't know what ooh wee is out there. I stole that joke. That's not my joke. That's Cedric the Entertainer, but you know, it's still a funny joke. What I lo really love about this Viera is the texture. When we talk about stirring of the lease, right? When stirring of the dead yeast cells in the barrel, you really get a lot of texture from this wine. And I love that. I agree. I think that raw oysters would pair crazy well with this wine. Oysters are clean and rich, just like the wine. Just like you, Andrew. Clean and rich. Just playing. I know, I know. <laughs> We restaurant folk. We ain't nobody rich. We doing oh, we doing okay. We're doing all right. Ain't nobody rich. Uh, no, but I agree. I do think that this would pair uh, really well with that. That was, a, that was a great, great call. Oh, Sheena, Sheena's in the building. Oh, do I need to put on my accent? That was really racist of me. I don't know why I just put on my Indian accent. Just because Sheena is here does not mean that I need to put on my Indian accent, but. Uh, I am really glad that you guys are here because I know that this uh, this month was your guys' first month participating. So we're having it with a simple salad with ranch and everything bagel seasoning. Is that why you guys are skinny? Like you guys didn't want to make uh, one of the recommendations was coconut curry. You know you could have made some jinga and uh, some coconut jinga is shrimp in in Hindi. Uh, you guys could have made some jinga and some coconut curry and it could have been on like Donkey Kong. Uh, Half correct, half correct. I like that. Uh, yes, much better. The chili verde is missing a fat content the wine needs. Fair enough. There you go. Outside of Spain, do any other regions make Vera? Uh, yes. But they don't call it Vera. So it has a few other synonyms um, that it goes by, and it's kind of made like all over the place. Uh, Macabeo is one of its syn synonyms, uh, typically in, in – uh, 
I'm going to need to look that up because I, 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 w- I don't want to say the wrong place because uh, I'm getting it mixed up in my head. Um, but to answer your question, James, yes, it is grown in other places. They just don't call it the same varietal. So, so in a nutshell, that's the answer. Um, getting more for oysters. Get more, baby, get more. I got more. Salmon is really good with this wine. Of course it is. It's going to be. Um, that, that just makes perfect sense. I mean, this is a phenomenal white wine. Um, I, I mean, I was a huge fan. When I tried it, I was like, yo, this is something that I want people to drink. By the way, on that note, I keep getting this question like every day. Like people are like, miss me like, hey, man, what do you got this good? Like everything that I have is good, guys. If it's on the website, I carry it because I thought it was exceptional. Uh, and I'm not going to carry something on the website that's not exceptional. OK, um, so so, yeah, I'm really glad that you like it, though. And I'm really glad that it's pairing well with a lot of your foods or even just as an aperitif to your food. Um, what else? What are the questions you guys got? I know that you guys got some good questions for me. Oh, uh, Sarah from uh, Zoe Tree Treasures just uh, uh, checked in on Instagram. Hey, Sarah, thanks for making the dope ass mask. By the way, if you guys have not purchased uh, a wine with Tesh mask, you need to get yours. Uh, Sarah hooked them up, man. They, these things are dope. They're uh, they're three ply. They have a little spot for your little filter to go in. Um, and, and they look incredible. And now you have options too. So uh, the original look was kind of like this uh, Chateau Gray where it showed like a little house uh, or a little chateau. Uh, and it said Pinot Noir or Chardonnay on it. Um, but now you have like uh, the option of uh, selecting one that has like a bunch of uh, corks on it uh, or selecting one uh, that has the, um, the uh, I call it bottle shop. Um, I call it bottle shop and I call it cork collector. So it has like a bunch of bottles, like almost like on, on, on display on a shelf. So uh, if you guys have not gotten your mask, I highly recommend uh, getting one now, especially because uh, uh, those things were dope. But I got to hang on to, I got to hang on to one cork and one something or another, Chateau Gray for my cousin Alicia. Uh, and uh, by the way, Lori, Alicia is always late. So I can't help you with that. Um, that just kind of is what it is. So anyways, all right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm glad that you guys like that. I didn't hear from, from James and I didn't hear from, uh, from Marianne or Ralph. I wanna know. I don't care if you have kids. Uh, I wanna know how you guys like the wines. And why, while I wait to hear from you guys, uh, I'm going to keep pouring. By the way, I don't know if Nick is watching Nick or uh, Ryan. I never hear from you guys either, man. Jump into the chat and let me know if you guys are, uh, if you guys uh, love it, hate it. I know that this is a tough time for like Nick uh, because he's uh, he's got the family and stuff, and it's always tough. Uh, Vern, I'm glad you're in. Appreciate you. Love you. Miss you. I'm glad that you uh, uh, like it. Thanks for the news flash. I don't know, sometimes it's just nice to point out the obvious, you know what I mean? Uh, all right. I'm going to keep going here. If you guys have any questions about the Vera as we move along, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, but I'm going to keep drinking and I'm going to keep talking. All right, here's what you need to know about Abadia de Tuerta, all right? Abadia de Tuerta... The uh, the wine rep who sells it to me when he when he brought us huge box of Spanish wine, uh, wife says it's weird with breed, not good at all. The Viera, I would not pair that with breed. Um, but you know, good job trying because uh, people always ask, how do you learn about like what what the proper things to pair are? Uh, you have to you have to learn what the improper things to pair are. Um, so yeah. Wish we were drinking on the beach right now. Came back to log in and drink with you, bro. Ooh, that sounded like a little hostile. Like, you know, you sounded like a little, a little, a little, uh, you know, you love me, so you're going to be here. But, uh, you know, also, F you for making me come inside. Uh, listen, we're only going to be here for like another 15, 20 minutes, and then you can go right back outside onto the beach uh, and enjoy the sunset. I think you'll still be able to catch it, so... Uh, so yeah, I'm glad that you're out at the beach having a good time. Abadia de Tuerta, my wine rep, Hugh, Hugh is dope. 
he brings me a box of Spanish wines. He's like, hey, dude, I'm going to show you blah, 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 blah. And he lays, lays the ball out one by one. He's like, this is what we got. This is what we got, you know. And then he pulls out the Abadia de Puerta. And I'm like, it's probably going to be that one, dude. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, dude, it's probably going to be that one. Uh, so uh, I've had this for several vintages. Um, I served it at the kitchen. I, I'm a huge fan. This estate has been around for forever. The estate itself has been around since 1146. Uh, it's literally been around for forever. Originally a monastery. Uh, now it's a full-blown vacation. So you can go to a Badia de Tuerta. Uh, it's a hotel. It's a spa. It's a resort. Like they have restaurants, multiple. Uh, and you can make a whole trip out of just going to visit this one spot. Uh, in Spain. So, uh, so we are in the uh, Hugh, big teddy bear, nicest guy. Yep. That's the guy you already know. Uh, love me some Hugh. That, that dude's amazing. Um, we are located, this winery, this estate is lo located uh, along the golden mile, uh, La Mia de, uh, de Oro, uh, which is a very, very, it's literally like a one mile stretch along the Duero River. Um, and there's some very, very notable wineries there. Uh, Abadia de Tuerta is one of them, but more, but more like kind of like collectible in the wine world is like Vega Sicilia is there, Domain Pingus is there. Uh, so a couple of, if you guys haven't heard of those, it's okay. But what you need to know about them is if you ever see them on a menu, if you see Pingus, if you see uh, Vega Sicilia, order their wines. Uh, treat yourself because uh, you won't be disappointed. They're amazing producers who make amazing wine. Um, and uh, they kind of treat the Golden Mile as kind of this like um, this very uh, uh, microclimate that exists in Castilla y Leon. So where that is in comparison to where we were just at, we were in Rioja, right? So we're going to head west from Rioja and slightly south. That's where Castilla y Leon is. And if you see on the map, it's the, it's the section that's, uh, uh, I'm pointing like you guys can see me. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the purple section kind of like smack dab in the middle towards up a little bit. So if you look in the middle, go up a little bit and slightly to the left. There's a little purple section on that map called Castilla y Leon. Uh, where the Duero, Duero River is, uh, which is where this winery is. So, uh, hotel, spa, resort. Check out their website. It's like it's like one of the best places to stay. Um, they like they they'll they'll they should they put all their accolades out uh, for as a winery in terms of like hey this is this is what we do. Um, they put all their accolades right on their webpage. So yeah, Macabeo, Yeah, that's the great. Uh, for the last one. This one is slightly different. Uh, it's a blend, but it's primarily Tempranillo. Um, so this is, I'm going to break it down for you here. It's uh, 75 Tempranillo, 12% uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 9% Syrah, 3% Merlot, and 1% Petit Verdot. Uh, and this spends 13 months in uh, French and American oak. And so, um, it has a very wide range of flavors and aromas. Uh, and I think it's got red fruit and black fruit, like it's got blackberries, uh, cherries, raspberries. Uh, it has almost like an herbal quality that I wouldn't necessarily like, like I wouldn't necessarily say eucalyptus for a Spanish wine. Usually I reserve eucalyptus for like Chilean. Um, but uh, I think that there's a small hint of that. There's definitely a hint of dill uh, which is common. It's like, kind of like the signature mark of American oak on wine. Anybody else smell dill? And anybody else like any, any other like fruit descriptors that you guys uh, are finding in the wine that, oh, my phone shut off. So Instagram's like, oh, oh, oh my goodness, dude, Instagram, I am so, so sorry. We are back now. Okay. Love you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why it keeps so naturally annoying. Um, so a little bit of black fruit, uh, picking up, uh, a lot of cherry raspberry, a little bit of plum. All right. Cheers. 
cherry Laurent. I love it. I love this wine. Oh my gosh. It's so wild and it's so like in your face compared to like the Viura, right? Like you have the Viura and it's like, it's light, it's crisp, it's easy to drink, right? Even though it has texture, it's still got that crisp to it. Uh, but then you jump to this and it's just like pow in your face. Pow, pow. And I like that. Um, this wine with Bosque Cider Braised Chorizo is insane. That sounds like the fucking bomb. Um, first of all, where did you even find a Bosque Cider? That's what I want to know, Ashley. Um, yeah, that sounds really, really good and in and of itself. Do you need to let it breathe? I think this wine can breathe a little bit. I think that it can open up a little bit. Um, pour yourself a glass. Okay, so a lot of people, this is a very debatable conversation, right? Michael, what up, bro? Uh, I know you're back in sack today. Uh, um, Christy, I think this is a very debatable conversation that to like, yes, wines can, they're, they're going to open up, right? And they're going to breathe and they're going to change over the course of an hour, two hours. But I think that experiencing that wine over the course of the hour, two hours, and seeing how it changes is really the journey, right? So I don't think it's, I think that first of all, I think it's a full bodied wine and the tannins are like bold, but I think that they're starting to mellow out. Uh, and I think that you can lay this down for a few years and see how it does. Um, and obviously it has a lot of acidity. You get that on, on the palate and in the, the back of your mouth on the sides, like mouth watering, like I'm spitting all over my computer. Um, Brittany, can't wait till you are not pregnant anymore so you can drink with us. Uh, but you know, baby, we're excited for you. It's very, very exciting. Um, so yeah, I, I think that, yes, it's going to breathe. And yeah, you can absolutely just pour it um, you know, you can even decant this wine, uh, for like an hour and then see what it does. But I mean, I, when you don't drink it for that first hour, if you just pour it and you just walk away, I feel like you're missing the story of that wine. So decant it, but then pour yourself a glass, even if it's just a small one and see how it drinks over the course of an hour and then go back on the second hour and see how it's drinking over the course of that second hour and so on. And so that's what I think, uh, in terms of letting wine breathe. And sometimes it's so juicy and delicious. Like, I think that this is super juicy and super delicious. Um, and uh, and I, I don't want to necessarily wait to, I don't want to wait an hour to drink this wine. I think it's drinking beautifully right now. Um, but I'm, it's not that you can't do it. Uh, it's just that that's my personal preference. So, so yeah. Other, other Psalms who are watching right now, don't don't DM me. Don't say... Oh, this wine can absolutely breathe, and you're wrong. No, don't, don't DM me. Leave me alone. Uh, I think that uh, you, yeah, you, you're missing, you're missing out on like what that, what that wine is trying to tell you, um, over, over the time that you open it and let it breathe. So, missing the story of that wine. Great quote. Quote them. <laughs> um, dried Asian plums, tiny bit of tobacco. Um, mm, mm -hmm. Tiny bit of tobacco, a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of uh, tobacco, cigar box thing. Vern, Vern uh, it comes from the restaurant world. If you guys don't know, Ver Veronica uh, was my colleague at the kitchen. And so Veronica is probably the only one who's going to say something like dried Asian plums. Uh, I would, I don't, like, I don't think like dried Asian plums when I taste it, I would say plum, but not dried Asian plums. And I, they're like dried Asian plums are like really tart and I'm not getting any tartness off of this wine. Is this the winery? So Ribera del Duero. So the bottle says Sardon de Duero, uh, but we're in Ribera del Duero. Yeah, so uh, the bottle's a little bit misleading. Um, I don't, I don't want to say it's misleading, right? Uh, it's just not quite clear because it says Sardon de Duero, and that uh, uh, Valladolid is is the the actual region uh, within Castilla y León, um, and they call it Sardon de Duero. But uh, if you're not familiar, but, but yeah, basically, Ribera del Duero is where we're at. 
Um, so right along the uh, the Widow River. And yes, specifically, yeah, right there. The Ribera del Duero and Rueda. Good job, Sheena. Did you Google that or did you know that? I want to know because that was impressive. Hey, Kiki. Kiki, do you, um, you probably hate this. I'm so sorry. Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? So you never, ever leave. All right, I'm going to stop now. Uh, you probably hate that, but you know, I'm Tush and I've been drinking, so we're going to go for it. Uh, oh, Veronica, we miss you. Yes. Uh, so my recommendation for Blake, you're right. Uh, my recommendation for uh, the Abada de Tuerta was definitely uh, Yamon Iberico, which is a very specific um, uh, ham, uh, Spanish ham. Um, that is, uh, who am I kidding? I'm sorry. Um, it was about me. It was about you, right? It was literally about you. Drake wrote that song about you. Uh, yes, if you have hamon, uh, it, it's it's incredible with this wine. But you know what? Sometimes beef empanadas uh, or uh, you know a triple meat pizza, whatever you got, um, that that will work incredibly well. We had we had spaghetti and meatballs, uh, and the meatballs were fire with this. So. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to work with what you have, and sometimes you got to shake what your mama gave you, you know what I mean? So uh, there's no right or wrong answer here, depending on, on where you're at and what you're doing. So, but Abadia de Tuerta, uh, one of my favorite producers, I feel like this winery is always a good bet. If you see it on a menu, um, oh, that's actually a great point, Ashley. You can get uh, Yamon Iberico from uh, Taylor's Market. Uh, and, and it is with it. It's incredible. It's, it hits on a whole different planet. Uh, so if you guys ever are over by Taylor's market, apparently they carry a uh, Yamon Iberico, Iberico, uh, which I highly, highly recommend. Incredible. I've, I've only had the pleasure of having, having it, uh, in, well, during my tenure in the restaurant industry, but, uh, it, it's amazing. It's incredible. It's yeah. I, I have no words. Just treat yourself. Ralph. How are the kids, man? You just tuned in. And Trader Joe's has it? I didn't, bruh. Christy, for real, Trader Joe's has it? And Nugget, too? Well, okay. To be fair, I don't go to Nugget very often. So, uh, so uh, Neelam, you don't have one near you, but you might have a... They're saying that Trader Joe's has it. Um, oh, from opening, how long to experience the story of this wine? Taste it right after opening, and after 20 to 30 minutes to see the difference or an hour. I would say an hour to be perfectly frank. Like I have quite a bit left in my glass and I'll probably finish this, but I'll probably pour myself a second glass and I will, um, and I'll see how it does over the course of the night. Um, because it is still big. It's still bold. I mean, like pour yourself a glass and then see what happens. You know what I mean? Um, so I would say Laurent to answer your question, go like every 30, 30 to 45 minutes, come back and revisit Take a sip, come back and revisit. Take a sip, come back and revisit. If you're not that patient like me, that's okay. Um, do I put it in a swan? I don't have a swan decanter, but um, if you have one, more power to you. Use it. Uh, a lot of people have decanters and don't utilize them, and I feel like that's a waste. Like a big point of that. I don't know who's smashing the heart button on uh, Instagram, but damn. I love you too. Shit. <laughs> um, shake what your mama gave you. Yeah, for real. Uh, not that I plan on buying from them. It's all about wine talk with Tesh. Well, okay. So yeah. So, so we were talking about the ham. And I don't, sis, do you eat ham? Or, you know, toba toba? Do you not touch that? I don't know. Um, but if you do, there, there's a small market in Sacramento called uh, Taylor's. But we also have Nugget Market that carries it. Uh, Christy said that Trader Joe's has uh, the, the Spanish ham as well. Treat yourself. Whole Foods has it too. Okay. Well, apparently I don't shop for ham ever, which is not that surprising if you know my relationship with ham. Uh, Yamon de Iberico. I-B-E-R-I-C-O. Uh, what else does Abadia pair well with? 
man, any any kind of beef, any kind of uh, steak, I think you could pair this really well with um, Spanish foods. If you were going to be like me, I would say, I'll tell you to go get like a burrito from Carolina's and uh, and smash a carne asada burrito with this. Um, because I feel like that's like the realest pairing that I can give you. It's like prosciutto, right? It is. Yamon Iborico is like is like prosciutto, but yeah, it has a lot more richness to it. Um, I-B-E-R-I-C-O. So uh, almost had an aura. I-B-E-R-I-C-O. Somebody's still smashing that heart on Instagram, and I don't know who you are, but I love you for it. I bet court, you know what? I'm willing to put money on it that like Cordy Bros has that. Cordy Bros kind of has everything that's kind of like mildly difficult to find at like a regular grocery store. Uh, Cordy Bros has. So, how is it working? James, you asked about like what else does it pair well with? Um, how is it working with the beef empanadas? Or do, you, do you like it with that? Because I mean, I would hope that, that that smacks, you know what I mean? Dude, so much dill. So herby, so delicious. So I actually almost recommended paella uh, for the Finca Nueva, but I just felt like it was a, paella is a really tough dish to make, I feel like, to make it well. And I, you know, I, I want you guys to try new stuff, um, but I also didn't want to, like, tell you to make paella and then, like, have it be a crapshoot and then it not turn out well, all, all that fun stuff. I just feel like paella is like a very, um, thank you, Kiki, I appreciate you. Uh, paella, is a very, paella is a very tough dish to like get really, really right. Um, and uh, if you can make it and you, you wanna try it with the finca, I think that that would be the ultimate pairing. That was my first thought. Um, but I just, I feel like that's a, that's a tough dish to like really get right and to really make uh, on a next level. And I'll, I'm going to be really honest with you. I've been really spoiled with my experiences with paella. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, I just, I wouldn't even try to make paella myself. I just want somebody who's made it a million times to make it how they make it and just serve it to me because I, I feel like uh, if they're going to put in the time and the energy to, to do it for me, um, and they've made it a million times. I'd rather have that experience than to me try making it all myself. And then just for that one particular dish, because um, I've had it made by somebody who did not make it before, um, and and that sucks. Andrew may have just spilled white wine on his laptop, not on his brand new one. I hope. Damn it! Damn it, Bobby. Um, where was the best pie that I have had? Okay. So, um, hang on, back, let me back up. Nora, I'm gonna answer that in one question, uh, in one second. Uh, oh, Marcus Wiggins is in the building. Oh shit. Uh, what's up, Marcus? How you doing, man? Uh, it's good. Christine made a chimichurri sauce with it too that took it all over the top. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm glad to hear that. Smoked paprika rub on your meats. Oh, damn. All right. Um, Damn, I hope that your laptop's okay, Andrew, because that sucks. Uh, and then let me go back to this. Where was the best paella I ever had? Okay, so the best paella ever, I ever had, uh, and I've had paella uh, over my course, uh, over my tenure uh, at the Selden Family Restaurant Group. But the best one that I had was when somebody actually bought out uh, Ella, and we shut down Ella for a, a wedding reception. Uh, and they specifically wanted... Uh, they specifically wanted Randall Sellen to come and make the paella. Uh, and I remember that night Randall made paella for this huge, huge, ridiculous size pan. Like it was insane. Like it was like 150 people, 200 people, something ridiculous. Um, and this huge pan out on the patio, he made this paella and it was the most incredible paella I've ever had. I, he, he took it up a notch. The whole like, you know, like when, like my mom used to tell me when I was growing up, she when she would make dishes, she was like, you got to make everything with love. Um, and like when Randall made that, dude, it was from like a different planet. It was 
it was incredible. Um, Selection Especial does not have a specific aging requirement. Uh, and it's just what they call this wine. They call it their special selection for whatever reason. Um, they, they, as a producer, if you ever check them out, Sheena, as a producer, uh, they actually make a whole different, uh, they, make, they make a bunch of different wines, right? Uh, but the Selection Especial, especial uh, is, uh, and I hate saying it, but I, they, it's almost kind of like their entry level wine, which, a lot of people will hear and they'll be like, oh, you know, um, I, that's entry level. Dude, if this is their entry level, you can only imagine how their stuff that costs like 75 plus dollars tastes uh, and how well those age. You know what I mean? Um, because, yeah, so it doesn't have a specific aging requirement. This particular wine gets aged for about 13 months, 13 months in a combination of French and American oak. Those crispy rice bits on the bottom of the pan, though, dude, when you get that crispy rice on the bottom with paella, sorry, I'm going back to paella now. Um, yeah, if my skill set, my cooking skill set was a little bit more refined, uh, I would try making it, but uh, not, not today. Not today. Any other questions, guys, about either of the wines? Dave Sieb is in the house. Handsome Dave is in the building. Thanks for tuning in, Dave. Um, oh man, Christy, oh man, I don't know what that means. Uh, you have to elaborate on your, on your, oh man. What? Chef Shane is in the house. Thanks for tuning in, bro. Appreciate you, man. I miss you. Um, yeah. I don't think that this red, I think that this red would have probably been too big for like a paella, like a traditional paella. I think that the, the Finca Nueva would have been amazing. Oh, still on crispy rice. Yes, Christy. The crispy rice at the bottom of paella. If it's not crispy on the bottom, you, you fucked up. Part of my friends. Yeah, it's got to be crispy on the bottom. So you get like that little bit of texture every, every bite that you take. So... We heart, oh, <laughs> Dave, Veronica, and Andrew want you to know that they, they love and miss handsome Dave. And we all do, man. I mean, I get to hang out with you fairly regularly now. But, you know, you're missed. P people people enjoy, enjoy your company. You make people feel good. And Gamba is as big as your fist. That's what's up. Sheena, did that answer your question about the, uh, the special selection? Color, uh, Ashley. It, it, it adds color. Um, that's why very, very often uh, it's added. So, so, the, so uh, I recently brought in um, this new wine called Lion Tamer, uh, which is a Cabernet Sauvignon made by uh, the Hess family. Uh, and they... Um, they call it the lion tamer because they add Malbec to it and Malbec kind of acts as a, it, it kind of acts as a, uh, 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 a, a tamer to Cabernet Sauvignon, right? So it really kind of like tones that big boldness down. Petit Verdot adds color uh, and this, this richness, uh, I don't want to say richness, but this color uh, to the wine that, that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily, you might lose by, by blending something else to it. So very often in Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot is very, very, uh, very, very common. Um, so that's a good question. You said wine was too big. Can you, um, wine was too big. Uh, what did I say that a wine was too big? Uh, can I expand? I'm happy to expand, but I need to know uh, what I said exactly about wine being big, too big. Um, I will say this, that uh, wines can be too big. They can be really, really big and bold and in your face. And the fruit quality of the wine can be really muted um, because the wine is, is, is too young. It's not, it needs time to age. It's got to, you know, it's got to develop a little bit. Uh, you drink that same wine, some wines, right, like are so big and so beautiful uh, that, uh, that you drink it in five years and it's like it's starting to develop and that's cool. But then, you know, it needs more time. So you lay, you know, you lay it down another five years. And you, so it's been 10 years that you laid down that wine. And now maybe the wine is like a teenager. You know what I mean? Um, and so, uh, so yeah, that, that 
that will affect that. Uh, Wade, I can't let you in, bro. I'm trying to do like multiple things. I got multiple streams all over my phone and my computer. Uh, if you got a question or if you want me to talk about something, what up though, pimp? I appreciate you. Uh, Big Brown sees you. And Chef Thiemann, what's up? Uh, Flavor-wise, yeah. Flavor-wise, it can be really big. Texture-wise, it can be really big too. The tannins can be too strong. Uh, and sometimes that 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 needs to mellow out with time. Or if you just pop a bottle open and pour it and decant it, that'll help it open up and it'll help those tannins soften. Um, the alcohol, same thing, right? I talked about this in my last last uh, session, uh, is that alcohol sometimes can be really uh, too high. So as you aerate your glass, as you swirl your glass around like a psalm, what you're doing, or I said psalm, but I meant to say snob, um, you know, because everybody thinks it's like a snobby thing to do. But when you when you aerate your glass like that, what you're doing is you're taking the ethanol and you're, you're letting it aerate and the ethanol evaporates off the top of the glass and it carries with it aromas and flavors that you wouldn't have otherwise experienced if that wine had not quote unquote open up. So yeah, uh, blend of grapes is in the chat. So you can see it there, David, I hope 75 Tempranillo, 12 Cab, uh, Cab Sauv, nine Shiraz, uh, three or Syrah, three Merlot, one Petit Verdot. Since this is a Spanish wine episode, what would go well with something like Padron peppers? Oh, the Vero would probably go really well. The Godeo from the last episode probably would go really well. Uh, which Blake, I know you didn't buy one of the Godeos, uh, but I do have it on the website. So if you're interested, uh, that's a phenomenal wine. It's kind of like, a, it's, it's jokingly called Spanish Chardonnay, but it, it has nothing to do with Chardonnay. It's its own bridal. Um, you said too big of a word for Paya. Oh, too big. Yeah. And then, uh, here's what I mean. Okay. Thank you, Shane. Uh, Marcus, what I mean by it is, uh, is too big of a wine for paella. I think that this particular Abadia de Tuerta, uh, I think that uh, flavor-wise, it is going to outshine paella. Uh, it's, not, it's not delicate enough to be able to, to uh, complement the dish well. I think that this is too big and too bold to really help paella shine. But... The Finca Nueva, boom, that's not too big or too bold to help the paella shine. I think that it would work incredibly well together. So yeah, um, so yeah, that kind of answers your question. Uh, what else you guys got? Anybody got any questions about the Psalm world, about uh, you know being obnoxious, about tasting all the time, about being in the restaurant biz? I'm happy to answer all, any and all of those questions too because those are always fun too. So uh, regardless, if you, I hope you like both of the wines. Um, and if you did, as always, scan the QR code on the back. It'll kick you right back to the website. Wait until you finish the bottle to make your purchasing decisions. Uh, <laughs> and then scan the QR code on your phone, and it'll kick you right to the website. You can get more. The link doesn't seem to list the wines for April. The link never lists the wines for the next month. I never tell you uh, it comes in the form of an Instagram post. Uh, I can tell you, Nora, because you asked uh, about um, what are you uh, What are you bringing to us for next month? Uh, next month will be in Australia. And uh, I'm still finalizing my decisions on the wines. So I can't give you more than that. Also, because I don't want to spoil it quite yet. Um, and I, I also I don't know quite yet because I'm still deciding. Um, but uh, yeah, next month will be in Australia. Uh, wanted to take you to a different part of the world, a little bit more new world style. Um, so yeah, Andrew, Andrew with the freaking Psalm talk. I love it. He said the Vera is hitting more like a Northern Rhone Viognier as it opens noise. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that. I mean, Northern Rhone Viognier is the shit. So again, those are sommelier terms, usually peculiar with red wines, as you know, but we like this one for sure. I'm really glad that you like it, and that's okay because um, because uh, uh, you know it, it it yeah it's good. I'm glad that we're doing this, uh, Laurent, because it really does it pushes us all to try wines uh, that are outside of our comfort zone. And so if we're really particular and we're like, hey, we we love Pinot Noir for the most part, um, you do the test talk box because. Uh, it's an adventure and you get to try some stuff that you wouldn't have purchased otherwise. And that's really what I try and include in these boxes. So yeah. 
James Udinsky, we're gonna have to have you. Uh, we're gonna have to have you uh, on the show at some point, so you can, you know, talk about your experience in in uh, Australia. Maybe we can work through the wines together. That would be fun. So yeah, uh, the test shot boxes are live. You can purchase them. Um, if you guys are on, uh, if we, if you've messaged me at all about being on uh, on recurring uh, purchases, you're already set up. You're good to go. For those of you who are not on recurring purchases. Get your fucking life together, uh, and uh, and join the club because it's dope. And every month it's only a hundred bucks. I'll always keep it at a hundred bucks, um, and you get the invoice too. So it's like you don't. If you want it to just be automatically charged, you can set that up. If you just get the invoice and you're like, oh, uh, we you know we want to see what you're gonna do first. That's totally fine too. Um, so, so yeah. When I picked up our replacement bottle for this tasting, we jumped the gun. Wife is amazing too. Eliza sh shared a whole new style of chalk art. She just did. She just, my daughter, Eliza, that's what Veronica was talking about in the chat there. Uh, yeah, she did. She, she did share a whole new style of chalk art. She actually created a whole storyline on our fence in the backyard, uh, which is quite incredible. Like she, she drew out this entire story and then she told the story walking down the fence. Uh, we were actually quite amazed by how how much creativity and how how much uh uh work that took her yeah the club membership is pretty much where it's at uh, is dope um i think eventually we'll add another club that's like a little bit more higher tier but uh for now the test the test talk box is is where it's at and that's what i want to focus on so uh lots of new stuff in the online shop I have a, in, in this white wine season is right around the corner. Uh, I have a phenomenal rosé in stock. I have a, by a producer called Parasol. Uh, I also have an amazing champagne by Pierre Gimenez. Uh It's a Blanc de Blanc, 100% Chardonnay. Go grab that. That's amazing. Um, there's this wine called uh, uh, Little James Bucket, which is like a really weird name. Uh, but, uh, it's a Viognier Sauvignon Blanc blend, and I highly recommend that. It is delicious. There is a, another Spanish white on the website, uh, called, uh, La Morera Black Slate, uh, which is phenomenal as well. Um, yeah, we're moving into white wine season. So, uh, I wanted to make sure I, I stocked up on some, some dope items there. Um, so yeah, oh, there it is, the sense. Jordan, you're the best, boo boo. Look at you, man. Uh, you're looking out. Thank you. All right. Any other uh, questions to wrap up before we call it a night? And if not, uh, we will call it a night. Oh, we hit 100 messages again today in the restream chat. I feel like if we hit a hundred, that's a good amount of uh, that's a good amount of uh, comments. I I feel like you know we achieved something. Like we should get a badge. I think I need a button for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! <laughs> All right, <laughs> maybe we can just make that sound next time it pops up. Just both of us. Just <laughs> yep, that sounds uh, good. <laughs> All right, we're going to give everyone a chance to, like, show each other love in the chat here because, like, you know, everybody's just going to town. Uh, thank you guys for participating. Thank you guys for, for buying the wines and, and being a part of it because uh, I couldn't do this without you guys. And, and, and real quick, just so you guys know, I, I see you. I see you guys uh, out there trying to hustle for me and, and spread the word and, you know, getting uh, more and more people to participate. I appreciate that because uh, – I recently staged somewhere for a second job. Uh, and after I got done with my stage, I was like, I don't think that I can go to work for somebody else uh, again. And so I'm stuck. I don't want to say I'm stuck doing this, but I'm like happily in this place where I want to be. And uh, the more wine you guys purchase and the more you guys uh, talk about what I'm doing uh, to your friends, um, the better and better every month gets. And it just... Uh, you guys help me feed my kids. Um, and so uh, I don't take that lightly and I appreciate that very, very much. So thank you guys, I appreciate you. Uh, until next time, uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, hang on, wait, are we doing, do we adjust the dates?
for April? It should be two weeks from now. Okay, two weeks. Oh, wait, wait, wait. When, when are you leaving again? Was that May? Oh, okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, okay, so two weeks from now, we will do uh, we will do Australian wines in two weeks. Go purchase your test talk box if you want to be on recurring. Uh, let me know. And Shane, thank you, man. I appreciate the love. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, and yeah, next time have food ready. Uh, and then I'll send out if you sign up for my if you purchase wine from me. I'll send out uh, I'll send out an email to everyone who follows me. If you purchase the Tesh Talk box, uh, you'll also get an email that reminds you of the upcoming tasting, and then it'll also have like a pairing recommendation uh, for for that upcoming dish. So, um, so yeah, appreciate you guys. Love you. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, until uh, until next time, be good, be well, drink wines that mean something to you. All right, guys, take care.